I'd like to welcome you to today's uh, webinar where I talk about um, uh, the Big Book of Literacy Tasks in conjunction with the Noteworthy Nonfiction Collection. I'm Nancy Akavan, and it's really good to be talking with you today. I want to go over some of the uh, selling points of the Noteworthy Nonfiction Collection and how it can pair with my new book, which is the Big Book of Literacy Tasks through Corwin Literacy. And I'm hoping that today you will leave with a couple of uh, talking points you can use during sales. First of all, all the work in my noteworthy, noteworthy nonfiction and in my new book, The Big Book of Literacy Tasks, focus on tasks that students can do which involves reading. My goal is to get books into students' hands so that they're reading and they develop their ability to read. The more books they have in their hands, the more they read, the better their reading gets and so on. So um, that is the basis of all of my work and that's the biggest reason why I created the Noteworthy Nonfiction Collection and also why I write for teachers so that I can support their professional learning and their growth as they're working with their students. Core to the work that I've been doing lately is um, some research that comes out of Harvard that is called the Instructional Core. And you can see it here on the slide. The Instructional Core has three parts to it. It has the teacher, you see on the bottom left. It has the content, which would be the content that the state standards is asking for. And then it has the student and what the student is doing. In the middle of these, the these three things working together, we see the task. And I talk a lot with teachers when I'm providing professional learning or I'm suggesting books for their classroom libraries that the task should be that students are reading and that when we are helping students learn new content or reach new state standards, and students are working through their roles as a 21st century learner in thinking more deeply, writing more deeply, that they need to be doing more reading. So I talk with teachers a lot about the fact that tasks matter. And this, the tasks really show also in the Noteworthy Nonfiction Collections because each one of the grade levels has um, a design to it. First, I, I, I went through a library website that recommended the highest quality children's nonfiction that was very recent. I worked very hard to make sure that the materials were up to date and that the, each grade level collection represented the best of the best that's out in the market right now for children's nonfiction. Uh, in addition to that, I put in the primary um, uh, classroom sets, uh, a poetry book that relates to nonfiction, and I also put into all of the sets, text sets that hang together in some way, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But the reason I'm bringing it up now is it really focuses back on this wor work that I've been talking about with teachers that tasks matter and that increases in student learning occur based on the type of student engagement. And I really believe the student engagement should be students reading. Therefore, my creation of the Noteworthy Nonfiction Collection and me really working with uh, school districts that I'm currently working with in order to get them to consider um, buying additional books to support their classroom libraries. I also talk quite about, a bit about the academic task. And when students are reading nonfiction, the academic task then becomes the act of reading, but then also the content that they're learning in the, no, in the nonfiction books. Um, I've strived that each grade level in the Noteworthy Nonfiction Collection has interesting academic tasks or interesting academic topics that would appeal to children at the various age levels. You will notice that the collection has a pre-K set as well as a kindergarten set. I chose to do this because recently in uh, legislation in California, we have now what's called transitional kindergarten, and those teachers need different sets than just the kindergarten, than what the kindergarten teacher has access to. Likewise, there are many programs that are forming across other states because of the new focus on uh, preschool education, and I provided the pre-K set for um, 
any kind of preschool program that might be looking at um, purchasing books or any sort of developmental kindergarten that children might be attending before regular kindergarten or after regular kindergarten before going on to first grade. The other thing that we know from this research that I talk with teachers a lot during professional learning is whatever students are involved in every day in your classroom will predict their performance at the end of the year on um, standardized tests that states give. So therefore, if they're reading more and more often and with more breadth of topics during the school year, they're going to have greater vocabularies, they're going to have better fluency, and they're going to overall enjoy reading at much higher rates, which will make it easier for them to um, do well when tested. I really believe that what we do in the classroom should inspire creativity and passion. And I made it a goal in the network, the nonfiction collection, that each collection would inspire creativity and pass it, passion and spark students thinking, getting them ready to learn. I also wanted to create some glue that could connect the teacher to the students. So here the glue is the nonfiction topic helping teachers get students excited about the topics that they're going to learn when they're reading. And here is an example of one of those books, and I believe this one comes from the fifth grade collection. The fifth grade collection is focused on um, information about uh, different things that happen um, in our world. So this is the camping trip that changed America. It's about Theodore Roosevelt and John Muir. Um, provides a lot of fun and interesting information for students. Here's another one from the same collection, which is Mrs. Carter's Butterfly Garden. And yes, that's Rosalind Carter. And it provides information about um, what uh, the garden did for butterflies and other insects. So these books were are organized together because they're about things and people that have done something extraordinary or interesting in, in our world that we can learn about. Um, when it comes to students learn by doing, I was thinking of um, the primary students and some of the books in the sets that could help the primary students, the kindergarten children, be reading but also doing. So, for example, you have the One Big Salad book. Um, I believe this is in the kindergarten or the pre-K uh, selection. I'm sorry, right off the top of my head, I don't have it memorized. But not only are they reading in this book, but they're counting. So. This, type, this book um, reinforces more than one type of skill. Many of the books in the Noteworthy Nonfiction Collection reinforce multiple types of skills. There are coding books in the collection. There's a coding book at the primary level and a coding book at the upper grade level. There are also books on um, social justice in the sixth grade set. There are books on how to how we explore our world from inside of our bodies to our world as in space so that students can be exploring a multitude of different um, ideas and topic areas um, as they're exposed to the noteworthy nonfiction collections so some of the books do take some effort and those books would probably most likely be used as a read aloud so here's one of the coding books, which is So You Want to Be a Coder um, by the author, last name of the author is Bedell. And this uh, book reads like a chapter book, but it's really a guide book so that students um, can get exposed to a little bit more uh, sophisticated levels of coding and they can understand uh, how coding happens. And they're actually uh, have practices in here in coding where they don't even need to have a computer with them to code because they can learn how the binary language works and they can just write directions down that would, um, if somebody read it, would like tell them what to do something like um, how to make a sandwich or something like that. But this um, would take some effort for students to read. So it could also be something that teachers are using in uh, stations in their classroom, um, or they could be reading it aloud, or they could be using it during um, science or math to be making a point. 
another book that would uh, provide opportunities for students to do some learning for the younger students is a book like this, uh, Natumi Takes the Lead. And so this book provides some deep thinking for younger children, understanding that um, not just facts about an ele elephants in general, but it, about the life of this particular elephant. So you'll see when you look at the collection that there is um, reasons for the books and the, that are selected to be in each collection. Like I mentioned before, the kindergarten through the pre-K through second grade collections have a poetry book in them that are related to nonfiction. This is so that the students can consider nonfiction topics in a different genre. There are also at least two books in every collection, PK through sixth grade, that group together so that um, students can explore a topic um, within two to three books. They can explore those topics deeper. And each one of the collections also has a theme. The collections for younger students, the theme is about their world or their own bodies. Um, the theme in the uh, other grades changes depending on the grade level. So it could be um, information about outer space. It could be information about how our bodies work. It could be information about what people have done in our world. It could be information about social justice. There is an array of opportunities for students to do their reading. I want to show you a little bit from my big book of literacy tasks. So as you're selling the nonfiction, the noteworthy nonfiction collection, you can also recommend this book. This book is um, not a narrative that teachers would read, but it's actually lessons. And there's guides in it for them to understand how to use the lesson. And you're seeing one of those guides here on the slide. Um, so this is task five. You can see the number five in the upper left-hand corner. And the pink boxes call out what each part of the lesson plan is about so that the teachers can learn very quickly how to pick up the book and use it to teach a lesson. In the book, there's also research for each and every lesson or task so that the teachers know that these are research-based lessons that are here and have a broad research base, not a narrow research base. And all of these lessons or tasks connect to books in the noteworthy nonfiction collection. The book is broken up into three sections. One section is everyday tasks for reading, writing, and thinking, and you can see the table of contents from that section on the left. Then section two would be weekly tasks for reading, writing, and thinking, and you can see the table of contents from on the right. And then the last section is section three, and it's sometimes tasks for reading, writing, and thinking. And you can see that here on the slide. But let me go back. The reason I broke the book into three sections is because the task or the lessons increase in complexity, whether they are the everyday tasks, which are all coded in blue, as you can see these, this page is blue, or things that might happen once a week, which are coded in green, or things that you might just do once in a while, which are coded in orange. In any one of these tasks or lessons, the noteworthy nonfiction collection books could be paired with any one of these lessons or tasks so that teachers could seamlessly implement the instruction uh, with the um, book supporting it. So I want to show you what that looks like. Here is task 32, and it's called Thinking Small to Write Well. And you can see on the left-hand side, there is the section called the Your Instructional Playbook. And then it go, ends on the next page with watch fors and workarounds. So this section, the Instructional Playbook, tells the teachers how to teach the lesson. And the watch fors and workarounds make suggestions on how to support students who may be struggling. And the pictures on the page show teachers the student product, what it should look like. So they have a visual right there. I teach this one, oh, here's another one, excuse me, Inquiries for Smart Minds. You can see this is a green one. 
And here is an orange one. This is one of the sometimes tasks. So you can see that the book is color coded. I'm going to go back and show that to you again. Here's the blue. These would be things you could do every day in the classroom. The green, things that you might do um, once a week. And then the orange, things that are more complicated or take more time and you may only do them once in a while. I want to highlight this one uh, particular task or lesson and it's uh, number 24. You can see that there, sentence strip statements. And this is one task when I'm presenting at conferences that I use the books from the Noteworthy Nonfiction Collection to highlight how to teach it so that teachers can learn to use the uh, lesson that I've provided along with the um, trade books that are in the library collection. So here's an example of what the student work might look like when they're done. But I do a uh, model with the book Poet of Science, which is in the Noteworthy Nonfiction Collection, on this task or lesson called Sentence Strip Statements. So I would begin reading with the teachers in my sessions, and then I would stop and have them brainstorm what they might be thinking about at that given time about the information that's in the book. So just a little snippet of what it looks like when I'm using the book along with one of the lessons in my new book, The Big Book of Literacy Tasks. So this uh, um, discussion today was to give you some ideas of how I created the Noteworthy Nonfiction Collection, what is inside of each one of the grade level sets, and how it pairs with my new book, The Big Book of Literacy Tasks, 75 Balanced Literacy Activities Students Do and Not You. They're created to go seamlessly together. I do want you to know that I'm open to supporting districts in any way I can, and schools as well. Um, I've already done one webinar for Oklahoma, and I am glad to provide supports like webinars for school districts. and. Uh, you can contact Tim for any work that I might need to do with the school district. If it was something that was longer than like a one hour webinar that might require um, more of a in-depth professional learning opportunity, I'm also open to um, opportunities like that for a district, but it, those resources may not be free. I do the webinars for free. Um, teaching the people, the teachers on the webinar, how to use the Noteworthy Nonfiction Collection titles along with the lessons in my new book, The Big Book of Literacy Tasks. Another idea is that you may start with my uh, not Noteworthy Nonfiction Collection as a starting point for a classroom room library and then add other books to it if a if a school or district is looking for a larger set. It's a fine way to get a library started, um, or if they're like ordering 200 books for a classroom library, you could start with the 15 books in the Noteworthy nonfiction collection and then add to it. I'm very open to any way I can support you in your work. I appreciate you listening to my thoughts and ideas today. And I um, hopefully when I go to conferences, I will get to meet you. Thank you again.